Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Wildscreen Network webinar. Um, I'm Lucy Muir, Wildscreen CEO. Those of you joining us for the first time, hello. Um, Wildscreen Network is a global community of natural world storytellers made up of individual filmmakers, creators, and production companies. Our members get access to all the latest industry news, jobs, talent. We run in-person networking when it's safe to do so. Um, and we also run these fortnightly webinars where we, deep, where we dive deep into a whole host of topics covering the entire natural history film industry. Today, we are thrilled to be joined by some of the team from Terramata Factual Studios. We've got CEO Walter Kohler, executive producer Suzanne Lummer, and head of features and special projects, Michael Frenchkowski. Terramata Factual Studios is based out of Vienna, Austria, and is actually celebrating its 10th anniversary this year after Walter founded Terramata back in 2011. Um, Terramata makes some of the best nature, science and history content around. That's me saying that. Um, they've produced more than 350 hours and some 10 feature films, which is about one feature film a year, which is no mean feat. The company has seen huge success both on TV and on streaming platforms, with their films picking up numerous awards around the world, including the Wild Screen Golden Panda in 2016 for the Ivory Game, which really was the standout film of the festival. Today, the team are going to share with us their experience of creating nature feature docs that are creatively and economically powerful, but most importantly, generate real world impacts for nature. And there's plenty of opportunity for you guys to get involved too. Please do tell us where you're tuning in from in the chat box, which I can see some of you are already doing. Um, and there'll be plenty of time at the end um, for a Q&A also. So please pop your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom um, and we'll ask them live to our panelists at the end. So. Walter Kohler, CEO of Terramata Factual Studios. Um, do you want to tell us about your amazing production company and what you guys are doing in the impact production space? Yeah, of course. Hello, everybody I'm, uh, from here uh, in, in Vienna. Um, I thought the best is I would start with our freshest child, so to say, uh, what we are doing at the moment, because um, when, we, when, when we started uh, looking into impact and and conserva uh, conservation, um, this was uh, uh, not in our reach. I'm talking about uh, um, our newest uh, uh, um, um, thing we are doing is our YouTube channel, which has really grown dramatically and um, is doing a lot uh, um, on impact and is devoted himself to um, conservation issues. Just to give you a general overview, um, we started a year and a half ago, and at the moment we are standing around 350,000 subscribers. Um, um, the community is extremely engaged. Um, we have like ratios of over 97%. At the moment, we are staying, uh, uh, we are reaching to 40 million uh, uh, views, and the average. Um, 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 over our last 10 videos is roughly uh, a, a million. If it goes to um, the top geography uh, um, is in lead the US with nearly 30%, followed by India, UK, Canada, the Philippines, Germany, and Australia. Amazingly, um, um, the gender is super male. Um, we're trying everything to get uh, more females into the uh, into the uh, conservation realm, but with uh, thirteen point seven against eighty six point three percent, we have to become um, um, better in that age wise, and because this is where where the impact is uh, the most valid one. Uh, it it uh, uh, it stands for. 27% uh, are under 24, 38% uh, are between 25 and 30, uh, 34, and the rest uh, um, um, is uh, um, is over 34. Um, um, and in the oldest age group, between 45 and 45, there is just 8%. So um, the lovely thing about about YouTube and conservation is that we are that we are getting the target, uh, the target group, which is the most valid one because they are caring about uh, um, 
um, their future, which my generation maybe had a, a problem um, 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 in, in, in the past. Um, um, the, uh, the, best, uh, the best to do is I, I show you the station trailer, um, which should give you a good overview um, on what uh, um, the YouTube channel of, uh, of Terra Mata, hashtag Terra Matters, really stands for. Can we have the YouTube? Yeah. Um, one example how powerful this medium uh, um, really is, is one video about the last two uh, northern white rhinos, two females, um, um, and this, uh, um, uh, uh, this uh, clip had more than 5 million views in a very, very short time. And we know from the scientists that they had a lot of impact, not, on, uh, not only uh, from people calling them and really trying to ally with them, but also money-wise, which is uh, uh, the keystone what we intended. Um, this YouTube decision was based uh, on, on, on the one film which was mentioned before, which was Ivory Game. Um, until Ivory Game, which, was, which we started in 2015, we were a company like a lot of natural history com uh, companies, um, really devoted to, um, uh, to that what our generation learned from more or less uh, Sir David Attenborough, that the best for conservation is to show the beautiful places and the power of, uh, uh, of nature. And uh, the, uh, the, the more beautiful it is, the more um, um, devoted the audience will, will get to protect it. I did that for more than 30 years and, and really felt passionate about it. And the older I got, I had the feeling Maybe we should turn our cameras sometimes on the things which you, uh, which we uh, shouldn't, uh, which we didn't want to uh, want to see before. Maybe this uh, um, not do it all the time, but do it uh, um, um, one more than uh, uh, than not. Um, and for me, um, the Ivory Game came in the person of Richard Latkane, which I knew as a director for quite some time. Um, and he told me um, 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 in 2015 that um, the Ivory crisis due to a political shift uh, um, um, in China is, is, is really one of the biggest problems at, at, at the moment. I, and I have to say, I couldn't believe my eyes and my ears because my generation really fought for the ivory ban in 1989. Um, and when we achieved it, and the ban, the worldwide ban was there, seemingly, we were far too uh, um, uh, much exploited by our job that, that to realize that it came back again. And, and I really felt ashamed that I didn't, uh, didn't know that and put this film in production with total different means because uh, um, um, from that moment on, we said, um, if we do these big feature films, which are risky to produce, um, I want, I want uh, them not, not only to maybe start a new feature, which, uh, a new genre, which we called uh, um, uh, um, the ecological thriller, um, not only that it should have a quality like any other feature film, that we get a lot as, uh, um, uh, uh, more audiences in the theaters and on streaming, uh, on streaming platforms are, are possible. We also, from the day one, uh, um, we devoted us to have a political target. And with Ivory Game, the political target was easy. This was um, to stop or help to stop the Chinese uh, uh, legal market uh, for ivory. The problem, uh, the problem at the time was that you have uh, you have a legal market, which was um, swallowed by the illegal ivory, uh, ivory market, and it would and it was the same like if you would have 
illegal and an illegal cocaine market in the, uh, in, 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 in the country. This was the big problem and we devoted ourselves to, um, uh, to, uh, to fight this. Um, first, we sent out uh, um, a, recce, a, a recce team and I can really remember to this day when, when Richard called me up and, 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 and uh, gave me a live image of the carcass of Satao. Satao was one of the biggest living, uh, uh, living elephants uh, at the time with, uh, uh, with ivories weighing every, every one of his teeth weighing more than 70 kilos. Uh, um, I was so shocked that, that I said to him, we are not on recce anymore. You are not coming back. We are full in production. I had not not a penny raised, but I was really um, destined that we will uh, uh, will do that. It was not as easy as, as, as it as it sounds, but in the end we did it. Um, the key feature was not only the quality of the film and um, the collaboration um, with Andrea Grosta who is one, for me one of the key defenders of our planet. The key was that we had one protagonist who was Chinese and he was a good Chinese. He was fighting on, 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 on our side. And in China, the problem, uh, the problem is they are just trusting Chinese. So if you can present somebody who is standing on their side, um, then, uh, uh, we found uh, we found out the good way. Then you can win this game because without China, without getting China on, uh, uh, over on our side, the planet has no chance. Um, I think I show you the uh, uh, for for for, uh, for the ones who do not know the uh, know the film, which was produced um, um, with Netflix coming in at the uh, at the latest possible uh, uh, po possible day, um, I show you the trailer. Yeah, the film got short uh, shortlisted for the Oscar, um, and from that on, we were quite sure that we can somehow achieve uh, um, the goal we had. And still it was amazing, uh, amazing that um, 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 after our premiere in November 16, um, the Chinese government, uh, government uh, announced that they will ban uh, um, um, the selling of ivory three years earlier, uh, earlier than uh, they, uh, they had intended. Um, how did we achieve that? Um, a really big help was uh, um, um, was um, um, that with the help of some friends, we brought the film into China. Um, um, with the help of Jane Goodall, um, it was screened with some high offici uh, uh, officials. We even were invited uh, uh, to the Beijing Film Festival uh, 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 um, um, with this. We then won the Beijing Film Festival, and then you could see the power of your Chinese, uh, of our Chinese protagonist, because he um, um, was the big star at the um, uh, at the conference. He always was surrounded by super pretty Chinese girls, aged from seventeen to twenty five. You know, he was the top guy, uh, top guy, uh, guy, uh, guy there, and this was really uh, 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 really amazing that. From day one, this plan that a film should not only be an artistic and economic, economical valid uh, a product, but can also have a political target which you can work from day one. Um, as you can see, uh, see on the tra uh, trailer with Netflix, um, um, also came a coalition with, Leon, uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, whose name in the promotion and the marketing for the film was of course uh, quite important. Um, what I didn't suspect, uh, suspect then that I would say half, and half a year after um, the Ivory Game uh, was on Netflix, um, Leo called me and asked whether, whether uh, I have heard 
about the crisis in the Sea of Cortez and about the smallest um, 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 whale species in the, uh, um, in, in, in the world called the vaquita. We had no idea. I, I said, you know, let me, re let me do a research. I call you in two weeks. The problem was he called far too late because he, he, he called us in, uh, in, in, in August when in October an international um, um, expert expedition tried to save the whale by rescuing the 30 individual individuals which were, which were left. In the end, after two weeks, we decided to film this exped expedition. Um, I once again could persuade uh, uh, Richard to head this op operation, and we went uh, and, and we uh, uh, went down with a film in mind that we show how an international committee um, is rescuing um, um, the rarest whale on the planet. Out came a totally different film because we were witness how the first and last female whale they were capturing died in front of our cameras. The problem with, uh, with the vaquitas uh, is that they are not stress resistant and capturing them kills them. And suddenly, you know, the, the, the full problem of this very complicated issue in the Gulf of Mexico was um, in front of us. And this was a really dangerous job because what you have there is two of the mightiest um, illegal organizations on the planet, um, the Chinese mafia and the Mexican drug cartels are working together um, to make a lot of money by, by, by um, destroying um, the habitat um, of the Sea of Cortez, which um, was called uh, the aquarium of the planet because it's, because it's one of the richest um, 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 habitats um, on the planet. And so we decided once again, you know, to went full in, um, do a thing which has a very, very different message because it's not as lovely as a, a, a vaquitas and, um, and totoaba fish are not as cute as uh, small elephant ba uh, 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 babies. The problem is far more complicated in, in, in regards to wildlife conflict. And we did it once again with one big difference. This time we worked with, with, um, um, with, a producer, uh, with, with an impact producer from day one. Rue Mahoney, which I knew from, uh, uh, from the Jackson Hole Wildlife Film Festival was um, um, not only our field produ uh, producer and field assistant on the ground in Mexico, but also from day one on our impact producer, because we knew it will be far, far harder to convince the world that this is a burning issue. Can we have uh, um, um, the trailer uh, of the film, which we did then with National Geographic Films? Um, as you see, the, the, the film um, 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 won Sundance, uh, the, audi uh, the audience award, you could really feel in the Sundance week how it works, with, uh, how it works with the audience. But our main focus was not the audience out there, but the Mexican government, um, so that we can really make public pressure to, to force them to do something against, uh, against the cartels there, because they were not killing uh, uh, they were not killing uh, the totoabas uh, and vaquitas. They are also killing, so to say, the resident fisherman, uh, fishermen, uh, um, which were running out of job and 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 were so to say forced to work uh, to work for the cartels. It was really dangerous because um, when the cartels started to really threaten us, we had more or less two hours to leave the country. It was far too uh, uh, far too dangerous uh, to stay there, and we came back 
half a year later to do uh, to do big press and and uh, um, the release uh, a campaign um, uh, for the film in Mexico. But in the end, and this changes from day to day, um, the Mexican government really made big efforts uh, um, um, to get some of the criminals down. They got them. The problem with Mexico is um, you cannot be sure um, how many money they spent to, uh, uh, to, to get them free again. Um, so even this film had a big, big, big uh, um, um, impact um, on, uh, uh, on, um, the, on, on, uh, uh, on, on, on the problem um, um, overall. Uh, um, and what we then said is, you know, can it be possible that we can convince um, some of the TV broadcast executives who always told us that, oh my God, forget conservation, conservation doesn't rate. Can we not convince them that, that, uh, that films like these have a big uh, um, 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 impact also on viewing figures? Those films were really big sellers for, uh, for, for uh, the respective uh, clients. And so, we try our best to also do something in the shorter for, uh, format. And Sue uh, will tell you um, a little bit about our la uh, latest venture into uh, uh, this uh, TV um, uh, conservation uh, realm, which a film which just was released uh, recently by us. Sue. Thank you, Walter. Yes, you're 100% right. Um, uh, I'm talking about Eyes of the Orangutan. It's difficult, uh, different, totally different because it's not produced for the big screen. Uh, it's a film that was initiated by Aaron Jakowski, an environmental photojournalist and a very small but really dedicated film crew. And um, it was supported from the very beginning by several NGOs like Born Free Foundation and Ian Redmond and Borneo uh, Orangutan Survival Foundation, both and the Jakarta Animal Aid Network. And it's a totally classic 52 minute production um, the, what, that will be distributed internationally like many of our t linear TV programs um, for broadcasters, public, private broadcasters, channels and platforms. And uh, it means the a huge difference is that it's not produced for a certain group of people who are already totally interested and in deep in species conservation projects or whatever. Uh, it's uh, rather the opposite. It's produced for an extremely broad um, target audience. And this, of course, for a TV department is challenging because it means confronting the classic blue chip natural history audience uh, with material that in parts um, is pretty hard to watch. Um, and the film does not only show the illegal wildlife trade um, that is threatening certain, spe certain species, uh, it shows something, and that is different to other, uh, all of our other projects, um, how easily we all, every one of us, can get involved in this cycle, uh, which leads to, to the abuse and even to the death of, uh, of animals in captivity here, of, to the death of orangutans in wildlife tourism. Uh, and that for us as TV department of Terramata is a really super hard to sell topic, one has to say. No blue chip, um, many talking heads. <laughs> um, we have to show blurred faces. We have legal restrictions, um, although we kept to keep that as low as possible, but they are there and we show some cruelty. Uh, at least we have uh, a not too depressing ending. Uh, at least that, but uh, we had a small screening some weeks ago in a small festival near Vienna. And um, uh, I was really curious on how the audience will, uh, will look at it. And I have to say it was the first time in my career that in a screening of a, of a film of me, um, during the whole time of the screening, it was completely silent. I mean, normally you have people who are eat, eating popcorn, rustling, coughing, making comments or so. And uh, here it was silent. 
and the audience afterwards really seemed to be affected. And this, it shows us and just shows me again that we can and we should confront uh, even the normal audience, TV audience with these hard topics, because uh, I mean, it's about what's going on on our planet. So although we know that the ratings on short notice um, will be not as good and maybe it won't be our best selling program uh, and distribution, um, we think there's no way out. We have to tell the truth. So uh, we try to do it with strong, strong storytelling, a uh, good narrative, a great team, uh, which we had. Um, and uh, so we think we can make a difference after these many years of only classic blue chip natural history. And the first feedback was pretty good because, I mean, uh, we, we created, especially thanks to the NGOs and Aaron, we created a web page, eyesoftheorangutan.com. Uh, uh, we had an article in the Times. We organized a successful online premiere uh, and we reached attention, what water even managed before, of hundreds of thousands of people, especially in Asia, already by social platforms and uh, linking uh, the project. And all that before the international uh, premiere has, uh, has even happened. So it's not pr really premiered internationally yet. Um, so uh, we will soon see the promo trailer and afterwards um, Michael will tell you something about an even more difficult topic when it goes, uh, when it's not about a species like a, a orangutan who's pretty charismatic, but when it's about uh, threatened habitats. So, but let's first now look at the eyes of the orangutan trailer. Thank you. What I want to mention here uh, um, um, also is that, that the aim of this film was to really get to us, to the audience, because one of the key problems um, is the selfies. If you go to these places in Thailand and you think, oh, they are doing fine, the young uh, orans, and you, and, and you make the selfies with, uh, uh, with them, you, uh, uh, we, uh, we all, um, um, are, are guilty for for their fate, and this is what we also uh, uh, wanted to stop. That every uh, uh, every selfie brings at least one young uh, um, orang down, and so we wanted also to show the dark side of social media, which we of course use a lot in 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 preparing in preparing um, our messages. Um, I said before that yes, from the uh, from uh, from the feature talks we went down to DB, and then we thought, can we uh, can we uh, make it not smaller but even bigger? And um, I came in contact um, um, with one big phil uh, philanthrop uh, philanthropist um, who dedicated um, a lot of money and a lot of energy in safeguarding. Um, um, one of the most beautiful, beautiful places in, uh, on the planet, um, um, the American Arctic Wildlife Refuge, because, you know, especially under Trump dark ages, um, um, the oil in industry really uh, um, threatened to uh, go into this uh, um, amazing uh, um, part of the planet, which is virtually untouched. There we are really speaking about one of the last wild, wild places on the planet where you have no roads, no airstrips, you have nothing um, um, but, uh, but wildlife. Um, and then we decided uh, uh, together, we are not only making one TV uh, special, we also making, uh, we also want to make an IMAX production, because this, uh, this thing is, is bigger than life anyway. And then the pandemic hit. And still this film, which Michael will tell you a little bit more about, impact-wise, it is one of the strongest, it, it is the strongest, <laughs> sorry. It is the strongest, uh, it, it is the strongest, um, 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 product, I have to turn it down, sorry. It is the strongest uh, product regarding uh, impact. Once again, 
um, made possible under the collaboration with Rue Mahoney and and her team. I know that she is that that she should be on the uh, uh, on the call, so uh, um, on on the webinar, so you can also ask her questions. Um, but Michael, just give us the uh, um, uh, the story how Arctic really happened. Yeah, I mean, you you already said many of these things. So also a big hello to Rue and um, because she is really the mastermind behind all this, Rue and James and her from her team. Um, so I can't really stress be stressed enough uh, how creative you have to be uh, and and how awake and always on the spot to to create impact and to do things differently because there's also a big competition on attention and especially in social media um it, it's it's really a, a hard hard tough uh, i'm trying i was told that i'm not allowed to swear so i'm trying not to do so um <laughs> so, yeah. Because the project, as Walter lined out, uh, started a couple of years ago, um, and, and then the team, you know, got formed. Drew got, uh, Drew got attached. Uh, so all was made by Flo photographer Florian Schulz, and um, then the Trump administration came, and there was already the feeling, you know, okay, this guy is. Uh, so I'm not swearing. So this guy is a little bit different. Um, so, and, and the last, one of the last really things he tried to do was to really, I almost said fuck up, uh, to really open the uh, Arctic for oil drilling testing. So really to open this wonderful refuge for oil exploration and gas exploration. So where then suddenly there was only a short window of time for public hearings, um, which usually are quite dull things in environmental topics. So despite the campaign, which got planned proper web page, got set up, protectthearctic.org and other things, um, suddenly there was this time pressure and, 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 and the team and, and we had, especially who had to enter new ground. Um, so there was this risky idea back then to kind of uh, use the, the, the tools, the technical tools, which companies are using to sell you shoes or the new iPhone or whatever, to turn this and use this for a better good to create awareness uh, for this for this topic. So and and uh, in the team effort, it got managed that uh, the whole within four weeks, the whole content and the whole social media world, which is a lot of uh, very much TikTok driven, uh, Facebook driven, Instagram driven, but TikTok really was a game changer there. Um, really lifted up and created 150 million views in the US. Um, it turned out to be the highest, largest response ever made for to a public comment and 6.3 million letters got signed and sent to, to, to the government. Um, it was uh, creating traction of day one from Joe Biden where he paused the drilling and the testing and um, and as a matter of fact, the, and this is really, and again, Chapeau Roux and James and everybody involved uh, can really acknowledge officially the campaign, the reason for stopping the drilling and, and, and really protecting the Arctic. Uh, and of course, the, the, the journey and, and the fight is not over. So the next thing really is to manifest this and work and continue working on um, you know, protecting the Arctic and really make it safe. Um, but, but this was really uh, incredible and, and a lot of luck, but mainly hard, hard work and, and being different and being dedicated. And maybe we have a look at the trailer, if there's still time. What was really amazing, Michael, is that this, of course, was uh, um, the whole campaign was also uh, um, um, planned uh, to help the IMAX film, and the IMAX film is not still, not out there until now, you know. So 6.5 million signatures, which led to the change uh, of, of, of of laws by uh, by the American um, Wildlife and Fishery. Uh, um, 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 and now the film will come hopefully next uh, next April when the backlog um, um, uh, for IMAX is gone. Yeah, um, I see that the official time 
I don't know. Is is for so now it's open for Q and A's, but but really again, uh, Ru and and James, a big hello. They know the shit because alone in Arctic and each of the project we can we can fill hours to talk about it and and really it's again it's it's really about dedication and it's a lot about luck, and and it's about taking risks and and also Walter Shapovalov to you again. Um, I'm not saying this because I'm getting paid, but really it's it's about taking risks. And, and starting things, and it could have also gone terribly wrong with the projects, uh, honestly. So, but but with the team effort and really a lot of passion and and a lot of luck. Uh, so so we and, and still seeing this, it's uh, quite impressive um, what we achieved. What Michael and I are doing at the moment, uh, uh, and and to to come uh, come to the close, is we're trying to diversify um, um, conservation messages. You know, um, um, for example, at the moment we are uh, uh, we, we are working on a feature film, which is nothing more than a wildlife comedy on rhino poaching, because we think um, we need everybody uh, to get into it. And the last uh, finished film, which is just was finished last week, is a hybrid between documentary and fiction, which also has a big conservation message, but also works um, um, uh, to target um, um, racism. And Michael, uh, tell us a little bit about The Bastard King, the last trailer, we, uh, the last and short trailer we, um, we, we want to present as the end of this webinar. Yeah, that's really, really uh, a new field also for us and, and an experiment and we are incredibly proud. It got shot over 10 years and, and um, it's, 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 it's showing in a, in a fictional way, the, the, in a way the, the real Lion King story in a way. So the story of a bastard, uh, Lion Bastard Cup becoming, growing up against all odds and becoming king to reunite uh, two tribes, Lion tribes to fight against the unknown and the unknown evil, which is us humans destroying the habitat. So that's the, also the underlying message that, that we, that the, there are not really much lines anymore in, in, in the wild out there. So that's, that's really a big topic. And, and again, us humans destroying the, the nature. Um, and it's really, you know, not praying to, to convert it anymore. It's really trying to get into more mainstream and attract others. So maybe we can see this last 30 seconds Teaser, it's not really a trailer, but to get it, give you an idea. Here, the new thing here is we really uh, try to create 300 look, uh, create a different fictional narrative story. Uh, got David Oyelowo to, to narrate the story and uh, Laurent Garnier, quite famous French uh, techno DJ and uh, electronic music DJ. Uh, made the music and, and it's really uh, quite unique. So the 30 seconds maybe gave you a first idea. But so far on this, thank you very much.